Hi, my name is Jonathan Carter and I'm the Technical Director of ArcSand Technologies. Today, we're going to go into a bit more of the technical details behind how ArcSand is actually instrumenting and protecting mobile apps against reverse engineering and unauthorized code modification. So first, let's look at what's going on behind the scenes in a typical software development lifecycle. Typically, you're building your application using secure coding techniques, you're identifying and fixing application security vulnerabilities through analysis and remediation, and you typically go through this step and you're following well-written code practice guidelines. However, the challenge with this code is that in a mobile environment, a hacker still has access physically to this code, so it's still susceptible to a whole host of technical risks related to reverse engineering and code modification. So in this particular scenario, what you must do is you must keep your application secure after you've written it securely while it's deployed within a mobile environment out in the wild. And we do this through ArcSan application protection for IBM solutions. This generally happens during the release stage and we inject the ArcSan guards, which are tiny pieces of code, into your final binary. And it allows the binary to defend itself against static and dynamic analysis, as well as code modification or code injection. And together, when we build it secure and keep it secure, we have an application which is safe to run within a mobile space. So let's look a bit more behind the steps that you need to follow when instrumenting your mobile application with ArcSan application protection for IBM solutions. So in step one, we have built and compiled our final binary, either in the Eclipse or Android environments, or the Xcode environments, or in an Ant build, for instance. In step two, we specify something called an ArcSan guard spec, and this protects the actual application itself. So this describes the, the different types of guards which you're going to inject into your final binary. And this is done one time, it's customized for the solution, and it's done with the assistance of a subject matter expert who understands the intimate details of that application. In step three, we feed both the original final compiled app and the guard spec into the ArcSan engine, which then injects these tiny pieces of code into the final binary. And in step four, the engine actually writes out the final hardened application, which can prevent reverse engineering or make it very, very difficult, as well as detect runtime modification or injection. So, Let's take a bit of a step back and look at an actual Xcode example of what's going on. So if we look at an Xcode instrumentation process, we're going to crack it open and show you the video. Here you can see a guard spec sitting in an Xcode environment. It's a C++ file uh, which declares programmatically each of the different types of guards you'd like to inject along with parameters specific to each guard type. These guards are automatically included so that when you hit the build step in your Xcode environment, it will pull up this guardspec.c++ file along with any custom reaction code that the guards may execute in response to an integrity violation. Here you can see we're injecting a jailbreak detection guard as well as a swizzle detection guard. And here is some custom reaction code in response to a swizzling event. So when we hit the build, behind the scenes, the developer sees none of this. The build will actually inject those guards directly into the final binary output, which you can then pass on to 
perform verification of the strength of the binary. So let's look a bit more at the actual guards themselves. We have a number of different guards in play that you can declare within your guard spec. We have guards that defend against static analysis from an attacker, and these guards are typically referred to as obfuscation guards, encryption guards, or pre-damage guards. We also have runtime guards, which actually run and are invoked by the application at runtime at particular entry points. And these guards are responsible for doing things like checksum validation, preventing dynamic analysis through anti-debugging, or modification of resources such as JavaScript, HTML, and cascading style sheets. There are a number of different guards that we have up our sleeve to use in these integrity protection schemes. Now, as mentioned before, the guards can actually execute custom code or use a set of default behaviors which we can also specify. So for instance, we can say that a jailbreak detection guard will automatically shut down when you execute the guard at runtime. Or we can also execute custom code or alert and phone home and let someone know that an integrity violation incident is occurring. So let's look at um, some actual examples of the obfuscation guard at play. So we're going to crack open an, an iPhone application which is being hardened and show you the before and after of obfuscation guards. So here, before we apply the obfuscation guard, we're cracking open a fictitious app which is not hardened and we're going to show you the jailbreak detection logic using a freely available tool called Hopper. Here you can see we can do very easy control flow analysis and if we wanted to we could easily bypass the jailbreak detection algorithm in this code with the assistance of a tool like Hopper. It makes it considerably easy. So here in our guard spec for this particular application we're going to declare an obfuscation guard we can even specify growth percentage for our obfuscation. And when we apply it and instrument it and relook at the same protected application using a tool like Ida Pro, you can clearly see that it doesn't actually um, show you any of the meaningful details behind that implementation. Let's look at another example uh, involving Swizzling. So with a Swizzling guard, we want to prevent this malicious application from executing method swizzling to conduct fraud against the user in a Bank of Arxan app. Here, someone is paying Bill $50 using the Bank of Arxan app. And what we want to do is we are going to perform method swizzling to steal that money. So we want to prevent that. And here we declare a method swizzling guard, which will detect at runtime that the application is under attack via method swizzling for the Bank of Arxan app. And when we execute an instrument, this particular binary, and we rerun our Bank of Arxan app within the same environment where method swizzling was occurring, we have the guard execute custom code and pop open a message box that shows that it successfully detected that unauthorized method swizzling was occurring we were able to stop the financial fraud which was occurring via method swizzling. So those are a few examples of the guards and how to declare and use them within your own code, as well as how to instrument within an Xcode environment. So let's look a bit more at the actual guard network itself. So here, for instance, we have a layer zero, or the base binary which we're interested in protecting. Now, we can have in our guard spec guards which are immediately attaching and inspecting and modifying immediate code. Now, what's interesting about the Arxan solution is that you can have guards protecting other guards or acting on other guards or code segments. So through this defense in depth approach, it becomes very difficult and expensive for a hacker to violate the integrity of the code because they not only have to violate the integrity of the code, they must violate levels 1, 2, 3, and 4 as well. And the problem as well is that the guards themselves don't actually contain any binary signatures, so attackers can't actually identify guards within the actual binary. As well, we reduce the probability of execution of each guard as we move further up in the stack to produce unpredictable 
integrity schemes for the attacker. So why Arxan? In this particular problem space of reverse engineering and unauthorized code modification, we're considered a gold standard. We have been in this space for a very long time. Um, and also, we do not actually disrupt any of the software development lifecycle or source code within applications, Android or Apple, iOS, that we are protecting. We also pr provide extensive platform support for seven mobile platforms alone. And we're deployed on over 300 million devices in some way. So it's important to not risk your business or your customers. You should, in fact, be protecting mobile applications before you release them out into the wild against reverse engineering or unauthorized code modification if these applications are transmitting, storing, or processing sensitive assets. With the use of Arxan application protection for IBM solutions, you can, in fact, innovate confidently while keeping your assets safe. If you'd like more information or a demo, please feel free to reach out to your rep or alternatively, contact us online. Thank you very much for your time.